Sons and daughters of God, chosen, the elect, the remnant. This channel is all about teaching about the uh, Antichrist, the one world government, the false prophet, the new world order, the uh, one world religion, the um, world government, tribulation, two witnesses, world, uh, world economy, the world economic collapse. And uh, if you want to know more about these things, it's time to get updated. Um, subscribe to the channel. It's extensive and check out the uh, playlist. They're very extensive. And this is Neville Johnson. This speaker is uh, Neville Johnson. He passed away in uh, September of 2019. But uh, he walked with the Lord for 50 years, like about half, a, half of a century. I mean, literally walked with him. I mean, he would see him almost every single day. I mean, the Lord would just show up, and he would see him, like physically. The Lord took him a lot of places, took him to heaven, showed him paradise, showed him hell, lots of things. Um, he, he went on lots of missions um, for the Lord. He went into hell on a mission, he said, the Lord would send different angels to him, and he would see these angels, and these angels would just pop up, and he, all of a sudden he'd be on a mission uh, for the Lord. Um, he um, he would have conversations. He was taught and trained by many of the cloud of witnesses, such as Enoch and. Paul and Moses and you would see Noah he would I mean just numerous um, different um, people that you read about in the Bible and, and people that you don't read about in the Bible he had some incredible incredible experiences he had an open heaven right above him um, and he, he was trained to, to teach us and if you're listening to this you're probably um Part of the the last days in times remnant, and um, he was sent to train us. Basically, uh, everyone can be trained by him, but the but the remnant people, and a lot of us don't know who exactly uh, if we're a remnant or not. But um, if you're listening to this, if you're going to listen to Neville Johnson, you probably are. Because his message uh, is targeted to the remnant, and the remnant will receive it also too. But it, nevertheless, it's it's great knowledge uh, to know uh, what your what the future of the world um, has in store for not only Christians but uh, you know everybody. And um, you can find him all of his teachings or most of his teachings on the YouTube, you just type in Neville Johnson, there's lots of it, and then he has the YouTube channel called the Academy of Light, which is in the description area below, and you can click on that, and I, I'd highly recommend you listen to at least something every single day from him so that you can get all this knowledge, and, only, and the thing about it is you won't be surprised when these things happen, because a lot of things are going to happen, and they're going to happen quickly. Because this is it's 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 this is this is these are the last days for sure, and you uh, you you you'll want the knowledge you'll want to know, you know what's the upcoming events that are going to happen, and you know there's things there's events that are going on around the world right now that you don't know about, and then you'll look into them and research them, and you'll find out that these things are that he the things some of these things that he's talking about are actually happening right now or have already happened. So, um, so enjoy the teaching. Um, uh, his um, his ex his experiences with the Lord have um, um, have been very, very, very uh, interesting. And he talks about these experiences uh, throughout his teachings, and they're pretty, pretty incredible. So enjoy. And uh, get ready for the end times ride. This is Neville Johnson. And he, I, I know he has a website on the internet also too.
called, um, I think it might be called the Academy of Light. I, um, I, I never really looked into it, but definitely YouTube uh, channel, the Academy of Light. You guys have a great day and enjoy the teaching. This one is called The Wheat and the Tares. <laughs> Once again, to the words of the week, we've been talking about the parables of the kingdom. The new phase we are entering into the kingdom age. And so we're going to be looking at the second parable, the parable of the wheat and the tares. And in Matthew chapter 13, 24, and another parable, he put on, gave forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in the field, but when men slept, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, it brought forth fruit, then appeared tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not, didn't you sow seed in the field, good seed, from which, whence have these tares come from? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Well, shall we go and take her and gather the tears up. And she said, but no, no, no. Lest you gather up the tears, you root up the wheat also with them. Let them both grow together until harvest time. In the, in the time of harvest, I will say the reapers, gather ye together first the tears, bind them in bundles, burn them, and then gather the wheat into my barn. That's an interesting parable. This. The early church went through this process However, it's repeating itself again in our day and age. The early church definitely went through this. Um, and there are stages of this. In Revelation 2 and verse 3, it says, You have borne and have patience and have for my name's sake as labored and not fainted. He was talking to the, about the church, the Ephesian church. No? The Ephesian church, the church at Ephesus, was a, a good church. The early church went through, but, you know, Paul warned the church at Ephesus. And he said, you know, in Revelation, uh, uh, oh, sorry, John warned, in Revelation 2, 3, it says, And you have borne, you've had patience, and for my name's sake you've labored and you haven't fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because you've left your first love. And this was the Ephesian church. They moved in the gift of the Spirit, all of those things. Revelation 2, 5, Remember therefore from whence you have fallen, and repent, and do the first works again, or else I will come unto you quickly, and I will remove the candlestick out of the church. He's talking to the church at Ephesus. Now, it's interesting that all of these seven churches that... that John talked about it, that's talked about in the book of Revelation, Jesus referred to these seven churches. They all exist in the world today. Okay. The level of these churches, what they were like, who they were, what happened to them, was foreshadowing the history of the church. You know, and so, the Ephesian church was a good church, but they says you've lost your first love, you've left, you lost something. Time went by the early church and gradually the church began to lose its devotion and commitment to the Lord, its first commitment, and start to cool off, you know, get cool. Paul said you've fallen from your first commitment to the Lord. <clears throat> they left their first love. He was not first in their lives. Now, they were moving in all the gifts of the Spirit. But something was wrong. Something was happening. You know, Jesus said this, and he said this in Luke 21, and verse 20, 34, take key to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting, drunkenness, cares of this life. unawares the 
verse 35, For as a snare it shall come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. That's the cares of this life. He said, that snare is going to come. Watch therefore, pray always, that you might be kind and worthy to escape these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. You see, it's an interesting progression here. The church at Ephesus was a good church, moving in the power of God and all of those things, Pentecostal, all of that. But they started to lose their first love, the cares of this life. Now, there's never been, <clears throat> there's never been a time in history when the cares of this life have been so great. I mean, the pressure on people today, the cares of this life, the pressure to conform, the standard, the snare. It said it's snare. This snare is going to come upon the whole world. And it was a warning. Watch therefore. Pray that you'll be kind of worthy to escape these things. Towards the end of the first century, the, the church at Ephesus had almost disappeared and had gone down. Now, Jesus talked to about another church, the church at Smyrna, that went through a time of great persecution. You know, the church at Smyrna, after this great warning that Jesus gave to the church at Ephesus, it was ignored. So, the church came down into a new church age, as it were. They came down into a totally different level. And um, it was important to understand this. The church at Smyrna, the church at Smyrna went through great suffering. I mean, <laughs> keep that. Ephesus didn't, the church in Ephesus didn't go through this, this church period of time. It was like a totally different church. The di dire warning of the church in Ephesus was ignored. So the process was down to a church in Smyrna. The church in Smyrna went through great suffering. You know, in John's day, Smyrna was located on the western seaboard of Turkey. Just It was just 35 miles north of Ephesus. It's quite close to Ephesus. It was a beautiful, well-planned city with ornate pagan temples everywhere. The spiritual focus, you know, in Smyrna was the Temple of Zeus. And so that's the kind of environment this church existed in. Politically, Smyrna was important because it was very pro-Roman. In other words, it was the center of Caesar worship. And this put a lot of pressure on this church in Smyrna. Remember, we're talking about a decline, different churches. And so, Caesar worship, what was that? Well, Rome had problems unifying its vast empire, which spread across a vast area, consisted of many countries, provinces, cities, in turn, which spawned many different kinds of religions. Okay? That was the Roman Empire. This, along with numerous cultures, posed a real threat to Rome. So, Caesar worship was introduced in order to unify all of these regions and countries which Rome governed. And uh, Caesar worship was introduced. Caesar worship required that you burn incense to Caesar once a year, just once a year, just took a few minutes. When you complied with this, a certificate was issued to you. You were then free to worship your own God. A. That sounds interesting. You were free to worship your own God for the rest of the year, as long as you gave your allegiance to Caesar and burned incense to him, and you had that certificate. This foreshadowed a church that exists 
today who are facing the same things. When Christians refused to burn incense to Caesar, they were branded as outlaws, enemies of the state. Does that sound familiar? And persecution began. You know, there was a guy by the name of Polycarp. He was a bishop of Smyrna. He's a very godly man. And he was seized on a festival day without a certificate. And um, he was given the option to burn incense to Caesar or to be burned at the stake. Not a very good option. This is what he said. This is Polycarp, the bishop of Smyrna. 86 years I've served Christ. He has never done me wrong. How can I blaspheme my king who saved me? He was burned to death. His death was burned at the stake. The year was 155 AD. The church in Ephesus was now declined, given way to the church in Smyrna. This church also exists today. The Church of Smyrna. There are many churches out there today who can be classed as the Smyrna, as Smyrna Church. And if, you know, Revelation 2, verse 8, it says, And to the angel of the Church of Smyrna, write these things, the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. He said, I know your works. He said, and tribulations, Revelation 2, 9, poverty, but you are rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which stay there are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Verse 10 of Revelation 2. For none of these, fear none of these things which you will suffer. Behold, the devil will cast some of you into prison, that you might be tried, and you shall have tribulation for ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. Now, you don't really want to be in this church. <laughs> you know, this church exists today in many parts of the world. Okay. I know your works, he said, and your tribulation. Yo, rich. Fear in all of those things which you will suffer. But you are rich, and I know the blasphemy of them who say they are Jews and are not. They are of the synagogue of Satan. There is a false church out there. Revelation 2.10. Fear none of those things which you will suffer. You'll be cast into prison for ten days. You think, oh, that's not very long. You can of that. You will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful under death. I'm not too sure about that. And I will give you a crown of life. See, losing their first love, their first commitment to God, the church descended to a Smyrna church age. Jesus said in verse 10, this church is going to suffer. There was some persecution in John's day, but it would be this church in this historic setting that would really suffer. Jesus stipulated there would be 10 days of tribulation. That's in verse 10. Now, in prophecy... A day can be reckoned as one year. See, you see Numbers chapter 14, verse 34. The worst persecution of this church started, began in three, the year 303 AD, and it ended in 312, 10 years later. It's exactly 10 years when the persecution, at the end of 10 years, the persecution ended. The infamous emperor, um, ordered the destruction of all Christian churches, the burning of all scripture, death to all, all Christians, you know. This was the Roman Emperor Diocletian. And um, this edict went out in the year 303, and it ended in 312, 10 years later. During that period, history records that over 40,000 Christians were martyred. And, and, and that is, a, it could be a man, much, many, many more. And you will have tribulation 10 days, be faithful unto death. 
and I will give you a crown of life. That church exists today out there. Many parts of the world. The name Smyrna, taken from the word Smyr, it actually means Smyr, which is a burial spice. You know, it was a spice which was grind to per into powder and used in burial. You see, even the name Smyrna was prophetic of this church. It's interesting, you know, today that in contrast to the church of Ephesus, Smyrna is a flourishing city today. It still exists. Flourishing is called Izmir in Turkey. The point is, to all of this, the Smyrna church was refined through suffering. Now listen to me, that doesn't have to be, but that's, a, that's the way it was. It was refined through suffering. You say, well, is this the only way? Is there a better way? Why did the church at Smyrna suffer so much? Well, firstly, the church at Ephesians. The Ephesian church lost its first love, which led into a rapid decline. Truth, spiritual gifts were lost. Revelation stopped, and eventually the candlestick was removed. That opened the way for a whole new era. By the time, the time of the Smyrna church in 108, 100 AD, things were not good as far as the church was going. So now, let's understand something. The people in the Smyrna church were good people. They were evangelical. They loved the Lord. But there was something missing that allowed persecution to come upon them. And we need to understand this in order to escape the same fate. This church exists today. You know, God's highest way in purifying the church is obedience to the truth. The seed, the truth. When this principle is violated by rejection of truth and ongoing present truth, the only way left to purify that church, those people, is through persecution. Let me just say that again. The highest way in purifying the church is, is, is in obedience to the truth of God's word. When that wanes, the next option is through persecution to refine the church. You know, John 3 verse 19 says, This is condemnation, that darkness come into this world, and men love darkness rather than light. Seeing you have purified your soul through obedience to the truth. There it is. Hebrews 12, 25. See that you refuse him not that speaketh, for if they escaped not who refused him that spoke on the earth, much more shall not we escape the same thing. If we turn from him that speaks from heaven. The church in Ephesus cooled off, left their first love, decline set in. The Smyrna church then was refined through suffering and persecution. It exists today. That Smyrna church exists today. Many will be purified through tremendous persecution, suffering, you know, and death, great tribulation, and many in those churches will die. It's not God's first choice. Jesus warned, then he said unto them, Luke 21, 10, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Great earthquakes shall be in different places, famines, pestilence, fear of fearful signs, great signs from heaven. They shall lay hands on many of you and persecute you, delivering you up into prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers in my name. It's at the time when there will be signs in the sun and the moon. And in the stars and on the earth, distress of nations, men's hearts failing them from fear. Then he said this, watch you therefore, pray always that you might be accounted worthy to escape these things that shall come to pass in the earth, and that you might stand before the Son of Man. You know... 
That's where we are. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed through lack of knowledge, understanding. That scripture says it all. Many churches today, the candlesticks have been removed. Even in Pentecostal churches, they, they take a, the flavor of this world into their churches. And worship is no longer what it used to be anymore in many, many Pentecostal churches. There has been a decline. The candlestick is removed. They don't accept and have access to apostles, but to apostles and prophets. Many Pentecostal churches don't have that. For they're there for the perfecting of the saints. So there's been this decline. Two ways, two methods of purification, Ephesus or Smyrna. The loss of the first love, decline. Hebrews 12, 25, see that you refuse not him that speaks. For if they escape not who refused him, that spoke on earth, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from what God is saying today? What he's speaking from heaven. The church at Smyrna went through terrible persecution, suffering. That was the only way to bring them into purification. Fear none of these things which you will suffer. Revelation 2.10 Behold, now if you will be cast into prison, that you might be tried. You'll have tribulation ten days, which turned out to be ten years in the, the Smyrna church. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what God is saying to the churches. He that overcomes shall not be heard of the second death. Okay, so here we are. We're coming down to the end. Oh, the parables of the kingdom, the sower went forth, the sow. And so we're living in a state now where these churches exist in the earth. But God is going to raise up a people who are hearing what he is saying today. The seed will mature within them. The harvest will be reaped. The tares will be removed. It is not God's personal intent. First choice is not for persecution. It is only the second choice that God has. Let us hear what God is saying to the churches today. Let us understand the days in which we are living. Seek the Lord with all of our heart and follow him and his teachings. Great light and great darkness will be upon face of the earth. The harvest will be reaped. But what kind of church, what kind of religious system will you be in? It's time to look at things differently, more clearly, with better understanding. Because the words of Jesus will be fulfilled. The lukewarm church has lost its first love, first commitment to God, will suffer greatly. He that hath an ear to hear, Jesus said, let him hear what God is saying to the churches. God bless you. Subscribe to the channel.